Welcome to Calming Heart, the sounds of David's Psalms. I'm glad you've joined us for this brief moment we share together. I will be playing some of the music that has been brought out of the Psalms. My name is Steve Reese. I play the harp. And over the last several years, I've been bringing the sounds of David's Psalms into recordings. You can find a lot of my music on my website, www.calmingharp.com. I have CDs available and MP3s. And you can go to YouTube. If you go to YouTube and then type in Peregrinati, P-E-R-E-G-R-I-N-N-A-T-T-I, you will find hours of beautiful harp music that you can just play in the background and be calmed with the music that David may have played for his sheep at one time or another. So as we share this half hour, join me and enjoy the sounds of David's harp. Well, once again, we were here for the weekend for Shabbat. And I have changed my location. I am now sitting in the wonderful country of United Kingdom. And I'm going to do something a little different today. I have my friend here with me, Katrina, who invited us over in the first place. Uh, Katrina plays the harp as well as I do. And uh, found me on YouTube and um, so we started a correspondence, uh, her asking questions about how I was working with the Psalms. And um, in the long run of it all, we here we are in UK and uh, she and Chris, her husband, are being wonderful hosts to us and really exposing us to a lot of great history. Chris is an incredible historian and everywhere we go, he has these little stories about the background of what we're seeing. And it's just been an amazing experience for Shirley and I. And uh, we have really appreciated it. So <clears throat> anyway, in thinking about what we wanted to present this week. Um, was it yesterday? I think so. Yeah, Katrina's sitting here with me. So... I'll refer to her once in a while. I think it was yesterday we were at Bath, right? We yes. had we had breakfast yes. at the pump in the pump room. Yeah. Yes. Which I have to tell you was one of the most amazing fancy breakfasts I've ever had. <laughs> so anyway, um, so but the theme of Bath. And um, I'm gonna be playing music in the background from my C D uh, the frequency of cleansing. So if you're not getting it already, we're into this theme of cleansing or um, of a bath or um, removing dirt. <laughs> so, um, so we're going to be playing that music in the background. And I want to have, um, first of all, I wanted to start out. We're thinking bath. This is the bath. The Romans, actually this, this town, I'm just going to say real quickly, was established most likely before Yeshua was born, or yes. close to it. Yeah. Is that, did I understand well, right? It was it was a pagan center, and it had a shrine okay. to the goddess that the Romans eventually would call Minerva. Minerva, yeah. And so it was built on by the Romans as a Roman spa. Okay. So then it became Bath, because they put their Roman temple there to Minerva, but that was where the springs were. Okay. So there were hot and cold springs, and this is in Somerset, so this is southwest UK. Okay. And so they would, all the men would go there and they would wash themselves in the baths, whether they were hot or cold, they would have a choice, and then they would worship their god at the same time, which was usually 
usually that meant appeasing the gods. So I think one of the signs I was reading there, it it said that they perceived this hot water was a gift coming from the gods. Yes. Is that right? Yes. Yeah, okay. And so it was actually bathing in the water was an act of worship for yes. them. Yes, yes. Now, interestingly enough, um, as I was thinking about that, I was thinking about the Jewish custom of mikvah, yeah. which in many respects is also a religious uh, exercise mm -hmm. because they were wanting to cleanse before they came up to the temple yeah. because they wanted to be ritually clean in order to enter the temple which was considered a holy ground holy place and so it's interesting how the Romans were kind of going on that idea but that had a little twist in it well yeah because they also made it more although they had this worship idea they weren't religious in that sense. They were really secular. They were just enjoying the baths and probably doing naughty things in there too. So right, yeah, probably was, so. Yeah. Being so, Romans. <laughs> yeah, so they have that reputation. So they were going there for cleansing and then perhaps as a sort of guilt offering, they would also acknowledge the God on their way through. So. Oh, okay. Now, I pointed out to you, and, and I noticed this myself, and it kind of caught my attention, that one of the things they would also do would be to go to a scribe or scribe themselves on a little lead sheet. Yes. Uh, if, some, if somebody had, they thought, had stolen something from them yes. or that they wanted to curse that person, they yeah. would write that curse out on the yeah. lead sheet, fold it up, and then throw it in the water yes. for the gods to receive that yes. so that the gods would exercise that the curse. curse. Yes. And the thing, which is weird enough in itself, but then I noticed that those little lead tablets that they recovered from there yeah. had been, uh, aside from all of the other artifacts from that place, these curses were the only thing that UNESCO established as a world heritage. Uh, yeah. um, um, how did they put that? Um, did they register it as a, a, a significant monument? significant yeah because it was a it was a world history site for the yes. whole thing the whole bath yes. and everything but there was something that they really honed in on that made that they registered as a uh, significant artifact yes. for world history yeah and i thought and isn't that interesting that they focused on the curses, the curses. not the blessings <laughs> not, not, the, yeah, not exactly. the beautiful things just yeah, the curses. so i thought mm, i yeah. wonder if that's telling us something yeah. anyway i'm not going to go too far that way um so one of the things i wanted to comment on because we always want to bring one of the psalms or, or more into the discussion is i was you know i looked up wash um in i use um esort and four different verses came up out of Psalms and two of them use one word which is um, the word uh, I gotta get that rachatz is the word there which has the meaning of to bathe oneself to wash like you would immerse into the water okay yeah. so that's the one meaning and then the other meaning um, was the word out of Psalm 51. It appears twice. And I've, I've used Psalm 51 before, and I've even shared music from Psalm 51. But um, in verse 2, it says, Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. And the word there is kavas, or kavas, and that word is a really interesting word. It's, to tr it's taken from the root to trample. And the reason why they use that is because to wash clothes, the fuller, which was the, per the name of the person who did the washing, would actually stamp, put the clothes on a rock, put the, the nadering agent, I guess that's what they use, some type of sodium preparation, soda or something, I'm not sure what kind of soap they had, or maybe it was a lie. Um, but they would put it in the clothes, have it wet, and then they would stamp all over it on that rock. To it was, That was the action. You know, today we have a, 
a washing machine that has the little center thing that goes up and down and swishes around, but they use their feet to do that. And that's what that verse has a lot to do with. So in going back to Psalm 51, um, it's one of my favorite Psalms. I'm just going to read it just to bring us, center us into the Father. Uh, <clears throat> Have mercy upon me. Well, first of all, it's to the chief musician, a psalm of David, when Nathan the prophet came unto him after he had gone into Bathsheba. And I'm going to change my, my um, version there. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love, according to your abundant mercy, blot out my transgressions. Verse 2, wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Against you, you only, have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. So that you may be justified in your words and blameless in your judgment. Behold, I was brought forth in iniquity and in sin did my mother conceive me. Behold, you delight in truth, in the inward being, and you teach me wisdom in the secret heart. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. And here's this is verse 7. This is the second time the word wash is used. Kavav. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones that you have broken rejoice. Hide your face from my sins. And blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Remember that word create is bara. And the first place we see that word is in Genesis 1.1. In the beginning, God bara, the heavens and the earth. So David is asking for that creative force to come into his heart and mind and renew him. Cast me not away from your presence and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and uphold me with a willing spirit. Then I will teach transgressors your ways and sinners will return to you. Deliver me from blood guiltness, guiltiness, O God, my, the God of my salvation, and my tongue will sing aloud of your righteousness. O Yahweh, open my lips and my mouth will declare your praise. For you will not delight in sacrifice, or I would give it. You will not be pleased with a burnt offering. The sacrifices of Elohim are a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart. O Elohim, you will not despise. Do good to Zion in your good pleasure. Build up the walls of Yerushalayim. Then will you delight in right sacrifices, in burnt offerings, in whole burnt offerings, then bulls will be offered on your altar. So we've touched on Psalm 51 before. But one of the things that we've been talking about in preparing to, to make this broadcast is, so what does this washing have to do with us today? Yeah. I mean, there's no temple to go to, so doing mikvah doesn't make any sense to us who believe in Yeshua. Yeah. So what... What's our place? What is our stand? What, do you, what were we thinking? Well, my question was that if we are washed by the blood of Jesus, then is the washing in the water the same thing? Because my understanding was that we're washed by the blood, but we're reborn through the water. So it's like a death back to life. Mm -hmm. And then you explained to me that there's <coughs> the Jewish culture, About mikvah, yeah. which is the mikvah, which isn't the same as baptism. Right. So you right. clarified for me the difference between the two. Right. That baptism is the reborn. Is a symbolic, yeah. Yeah, the dying and the supernatural stand against the forces of evil. But the mikvah is the Jewish cleansing for the temple and to for be, the relationship. Right, exactly, yeah. yeah. To be prepared to go to the temple. Yes. Right. And, and even today, um, we've been in Israel like seven times, yeah. We, we've been there enough to begin to catch an idea of how things and talk with I talk with a lot of rabbis and a lot of orthodox and we've um, spent a lot of time with many of them and had a lot of conversations and one of the things that they 
will tell me is that the mikvah for them today is very important, especially as they come close to one of the feasts of, that are, of the cycle of the year. Yes. And obviously the women also on a monthly basis will do mikvah as a cleansing as well. Yeah. They always take a shower and everything before they go to mikvah, so it's not that they're going to use soap and things yeah. in the in the mikvah. The mikvah, it, in some ways, it's well, probably mostly it's symbolic, but it's also seen as an act of worship. It's an act of preparation, yeah. preparing the heart to come into the holy time, which would be the feasts, or the holy place, which would be the temple if it was in existence. So. And I think many of the Jews that I talked with see the mikvah as their preparation for the kingdom to come as well. Mm -hmm. they, they, they recognize that, and they're looking forward to Mashiach. They don't see Yeshua as the Mashiach that they were looking for, yes. but they are looking forward to Mashiach to yeah. come. Yeah. So I tell some of the friends I've talked with fairly closely, you know, letting them know I don't want to offend them. But what the only difference I see between me and you is that you're looking for his first coming, I'm looking for his second coming. Yes, yes. <laughs> so you've sort of completed their faith, but they don't see it that way yet. Right, exactly. So you are the completed. And they don't like that word completed because they go like, what, we're not the whole, you know, it's the oh, whole thing. Okay. So that's kind of offensive. Okay. Um, and so I like to just call them my brothers and sisters. You know what? Yeah. Because in the reality, when you read through Zechariah chapter 12, you see that there comes this time when Yeshua appears and, it's, and it says that they see him whom they are pierced and they say, blessed is he yes. that comes in the name of the Lord. Yeah. And Yeshua, just at the last step, he said, you will not see me again until you say, yeah. blessed is he that comes. So he's referring to Zechariah yes. when he says that. Yes. So all of it together, <clears throat> I see my my Jewish brothers and sisters. We're we're still we're all sitting here waiting for the same thing. Yeah. We might have just a slightly yeah. different verbiage that we use, yes. but at the same time, now one thing that I <clears throat> see that I feel sad about is that I think you know you, you and I as we have in our brothers and sisters in the church or, or the ecclesia yeah. <laughs> I like to use that word yeah. better and, and yeah. you Chris likes to use that too and I, yeah. I agree with him wholeheartedly um, is that we we feel this freedom in Yeshua yes. because of the blood the washing yes. of the blood yes. as we've been talking yes so that there's not this drive i guess you would say to to you know i call it the checkbox religion yes. you know i've yes. got to do this and then i've got to do this and then i've yeah. got to do this and I, that's the other thing i feel s sad that my brothers and sisters my jewish brothers and sisters um ha haven't had that full revelation in their life yet yeah yeah. Um, and I pray for that to be a true. It's interesting that the Messianic Church, Messianic meaning those who accept Yeshua but still operate in the Jewish customs, um, is growing yes. leaps and bounds. Yes. So the Holy Spirit is being released on the land. Yeah. There's no doubt about it. Yeah. And um, that does my heart good to see that. So is there any other ideas of bathing that you were thinking of? Um, the other thing that I came to understand was the way that the bathing was used in the days of the tabernacle because it seemed to be about death processes in the body. So it was the emissions, like the sexual emissions and mm -hmm. the menstrual issue as well. It wasn't about the person being unclean, it was death processes right. because God is only life right. and in meeting with him in relationship right. We have to be free of anything that is worldly and dead. A symbol of, or a, a result of death. Yeah. Yes. Right, right. Yes. So yeah. it wasn't that you had to have a bar of soap and give yourself a good scrub. So it wasn't actually that. 
this, this is how I came to understand it. It was anything about the world that is in and of your body, your right. body processes. Or your life, we can even say. It yes. doesn't even have to be just the body. It can yes. be your mind. A, a projection on that into your life as yeah. well. Yeah, even your thoughts, because right. the thoughts need cleansing. Exactly. And that requires a supernatural job. So the rituals <coughs> probably help with the mental cleansing as well. And, and thinking about this too, um, because a lot of people within the Christian church, Christian churches or organization or understanding, yeah. um, have the idea that, well, I was baptized, so yes. I'm done. Yeah. <laughs> Once done, yeah. there, there we are. Yeah. Whereas I kind of like the way the Jews approach it, be, that it can, it's something that can be done any time of the year, as many times of the year as you feel like you need it. Yeah. And so... Um, for sure it was done before each of the feasts because all of the men were commanded to come up three times to Jerusalem through the year. So it was certainly done at least three times a year. Yeah. But when I've been in Israel, there have been times we've been at springs or other places, had water, that wasn't any special occasion and somebody came and jumped in, you know. Yeah. So yeah. Um, it it can, it so that when, they, when somebody feels like they, there's an, an attitude of their heart even yes. they yes. they will go mikvah yeah and i i kind of like that idea so it's yeah. like i don't have to go get the preacher and say well i want to yeah. be baptized next sunday or yes. whatever um you can go it can it's something that now another thing we talked about was the fact that john the immerser yes. is the kind of the yeah. term may not have actually been doing what the pastor does today of dunking the person under yeah. Because the Jewish tradition is to have an observer, a witness, who, as soon as you go under, when you come back out, they will say kasher, which means kosher, which means you did it right. It was right. it was thorough. Right. It, every part of you was under the water, and normally they would do three dips at least. And and um, interesting that the 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 uh, Assyrian uh, Naaman went under seven times. Oh. <laughs> okay. And when he came up the seventh time, he was free of leprosy. Oh. Uh, and he was told by Elijah to do that. So yeah. he was following the directions. Yeah. And he didn't want to. And his servant said, well, <laughs> what do you have to lose? <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so even, you know, at that point, that's certainly a miracle that took place with mikvah. Yeah. I don't know if he thought he was doing mikvah or if it was specifically was what Elijah had in mind. But... You know, back on track, um, John may have just been the witness to observing and declaring whether it was kosher yes. or not. Um, that's kind of what my thought is. Yeah. Um, I'm willing to be proven wrong, but anyway, I don't think we have specifics on that. Yeah. But but just to say that they felt it was important enough, and today even feel it's important enough to have a witness. Yes. So. And there's, there's so much of our life in which it's really important to have a witness. Yeah. It, I'm here in, in, we were in Wales yesterday, which my name is Reese, and I've always wanted to see Wales, and so I finally got to see it yesterday. But I've read a lot about this Celtic spirituality, yeah. <clears throat> and one of the things I love is that they have this concept called Anamkara, which you could loosely translate as soul friend. Okay. But it was somebody who you trusted that walked alongside you in life. And when you needed to confess, yes. they were the ones you confessed to. Yes. And once they knew what you were confessing, the two of you could declare against the enemy, this has been confessed, it's yeah. gone, it's dealt with, it's done. Yes. Don't ever bring it up again. Yeah. And I really like that concept. Yeah. It's like, and I think so much of our lives today are isolated. isolated. Yeah. yeah, we're we're too alone. We're yes. too by ourselves. Yes. And there's value in having that witness. Yes. And um, and so I was just while I was going around the castle down in Cardiff yesterday, um, I was just thinking about, you know, this is where all of that was happening. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, that was kind of running through my head that. Yeah. Um, Finally, here I am get, being on the ground where that was going on. Um, 
So there are some things that you've said, like with the frequencies, where these things were, they knew and they had things right. Yeah. But they ended up actually going off course. Whereas you with your music and the things that we now know with Yeshua and the practices of the gatherings and coming together to form a relationship, yeah. that's where we bring it together and right. make it right. Yeah. And that, um, you know, it, I think that's important. You know, the enemy does truth with a twist. Yeah. So he, yeah. The, the things that, as you mentioned, the frequency and those things that I've been working with. Yeah. Um, First of all, God created them. Yeah. <laughs> Secondly, um, he created them for our benefit. Yes. And the enemy doesn't want us to have benefit. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> he, he wants to see us die. Yeah. So if there's something that our father created that is that is he made for us for to benefit from, the enemy's going to try to obscure that. Yeah. Just like he tries to obscure the gospel. Yes. He tries to obscure this understanding of being washed in the blood. Yeah. All of these things, the enemy doesn't want us to know or understand these things. Yes. Because if we understand them, then we engage yes. and we have that relationship that he can't come against. Yeah. So, yeah, that is really, um, that's really where we need to be. Yeah. And, uh, you know, once again, it comes back to relationship, relationship, yeah. relationship. And so we need a, a friend, a human friend. We need Yeshua as a friend. So both of the witnesses to our transformation yeah, and yeah. our cleansing of the heart, cleansing of the mind is through the blood yeah. Amen. and the cleansing of our bodies and the way of thinking is through any ritual or praise that we desire to have that Amen. means anything to us. And that's where we'll leave it for this week. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you. Bye. Bye. So I hope you've enjoyed our time together. Stay tuned, as I say. A little pun. I have many more songs to share with you. I have more to share about how this all comes together. And I pray that you will share and help people, especially those you see stressed, especially in these times that we're going through. Bring people to this calming and this peace and this rest that this beautiful music of the Psalms of David brings to each of our lives. Thank you for listening. Hope to see you next week. Many, many blessings to you all today.